A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I, the Lord, your God, teach you what is for your good and lead you on the way you should go. If you would hearken to my commandments, your prosperity would be like a river and your vindication like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would be like the sand and those born of your stock like its grains. Their name never cut off or blotted out from my presence. Urbum Domini Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Evangelii secundum Matteo. Gloria Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children who sit in marketplaces and call to one another, We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. Verbum Domini. Jesus exposes the excuses of uh, especially the leaders of the people, but of his, those listening to him, and he compares them to spoiled brats. That's basically what he's calling them, that uh, you're contrary. No matter which direction we come at you, you don't like it. You're just discontent, and you're not going to open your heart uh, to receive the Lord. Uh, John the Baptist came uh, living a life of fasting and penance, but he was proclaiming the kingdom of God. Jesus came and he ate and drank with them and he proclaimed the kingdom of God. 
And so he's saying this message is the same. And so whether we're playing music that belongs at a funeral or we're playing music that belongs at a wedding, you're not happy. And I think we've all encountered children like this. You know, little kids can get in a little funk. And we accept it if they're smaller. As they keep getting bigger, you know, we call it out um, because it becomes unacceptable behavior. But I remember a long, long time ago before I entered religious life hearing a story from one of my aunts who is herself a consecrated religious and had taught school for many years. Uh, but she had a friend who had small children and this woman got herself in a, a pickle and needed someone to look after the kids. And my aunt said, well, just go. Yeah, I'll, I'll look after them for a couple of hours. And the littlest one must have been around four years old or something. And he was not having any of this. You know, he's looking at my aunt like, you, you know, you're here, but you are not my mommy. And so that just was not acceptable. You know, no matter what she did, it just wasn't quite right. And she said, so I decided, you know, I'll make him a sandwich. And she said, well, you know, kids, you know, they'll be happy. They have a little food, eat something. And so there she was making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And this little boy was looking at that and just, just he wasn't quite convinced. So she finally puts that together and he started crying. And she said, well, you know, what's wrong, sweetheart? And he tells her that his mommy puts the jelly on top not, uh, not the peanut butter on the top. And so my aunt took the sandwich. By this point, she had had enough. She took the sandwich and she turned it over, you know, so the jelly was on top. Well, that was like the end, you know. And she didn't know what to do. Um, she has a very funny sense of humor, but she finally looked at this little child and she pretended to cry herself, just, ah, you know, and get, make the child realize, well, this is what that looks like, you know. You're just totally discontent, um, contrary to whatever is presented to you. And that's what Jesus, again, that's what he's saying to that generation. Um, you refuse to open your heart to receive me. And we do not want to be like that generation. Uh, and we're reminded of that during this season of Advent when we focus on the two comings of Christ. You know, in this first part of Advent up until uh, December 17th, we're focusing on that first coming of the, or the second coming of the Lord, his return in glory. And then the latter part of December up to Christmas, we focus our attention more on how he came among us in humility as this little baby. And we say this every day in the preface of the Mass. There's this reference. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. And then later in that prayer we say that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest. And so we acknowledge this with faith, you know, that uh, we are so grateful and we're overjoyed in this reality that the Lord assumed at his first coming this humbleness, this littleness, this lowliness of human flesh. Came, came among us just like you and me. Uh, he looked just like you and me. He understands you and me completely. <coughs> And he was like us in every way but sin. And he came among us in this lowliness so that we could approach him without fear. As we say so often in this season, who is afraid of a baby? You know, and you, everyone wants to see this baby. And this is how the Lord wins us. Even when we look at just uh, statuary of the Christ child. You know, don't we go before the manger scene and we're inclined to kneel down? And what is the disposition of our heart? We want to reach out and hold the baby. Uh, 
again, I say this often in homilies, that um, when anybody comes to the chapel and has one of those little carriers and there's a baby inside of there, everyone is distracted. I could be preaching more eloquently than Archbishop Sheen and you wouldn't pay one lick of attention to me because you want to see the baby. You know, a baby captures our heart and there's something wins our affection. And we end up taking that child to ourself, into ourself almost. We want to absorb that little person. And this is how the Lord came to us, to say, open your hearts and receive me when I come to you in humility. And he came this way uh, to assure us, I promised you from the fall of man, from the, the day that Adam and Eve sinned against me, I promised to come among you to redeem you. And so I did. And we know that his promise that he said I, after when he was ascending to heaven and he promised the apostles, his disciples, he would return again, we know that he will be true to his word. He will fulfill that promise because he did in his first coming. And he manifested himself as the way, the life, and the truth. You know, he is the truth. And so he cannot uh, deceive us. It is incomprehensible and impossible for the Lord to deceive us. And so we put all of our faith in that promised second coming, his return in uh, glory and majesty. And what the Lord wants us to understand is that we should not be afraid of him in that second coming. That will be the day of final judgment. Um, but that we run to him. Uh, just as we would to him in his first coming, we want to have such a faith that we run to him in his return in glory. And there is this, uh, some of the fathers refer to this median coming or this middle coming that uh, what is to happen in our hearts, especially in this uh, Advent season, as we reflect on the first coming and the second coming of Christ, is that our hearts are to open up to him. And it, what is, it is to be made straight the way of the Lord within us that he enters our hearts, um, that he has that dwelling place in us, that we're not contrary, that we're not indifferent, uh, and that we don't reject him. Uh, and that's what we're hearing in the gospel passage today, that Jesus is, he's frustrated with these people. Can you imagine, you know, if somebody called you a, a spoiled brat? You know, you're behaving like a little child. Um, you're sophomoric, you know, those are insults. And that's what the Lord leveled at these people. He wasn't saying to them, oh, you're just like such beautiful little children. No, he was calling them out saying, you know, you're turning me off here. Um, and your behavior is uh, rather disgusting. Don't let him say that to us. You know, that we have our hearts open for him. Uh, in his first coming, in his return in glory, and in his desire today to enter into our hearts.